Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome to this special HBO Sports presentation, Mayweather Pacquiao, The Legends Speak. Working with me, HBO Sports boxing analyst, Max Kellerman. And we're gonna have some great fun, Max. I'm gonna be talking to a select sample of the small number of men who have fought both Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. And I'm gonna talk to George Foreman, Lennox Lewis, and Bernard Hopkins about their transcendent fights and what they think of Mayweather and Pacquiao. Not a bad way to make a living. Let's get started right now with my conversation with two of the small number of men who fought both Pacquiao and Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoya and Shane Mosley. Gentlemen, thanks very much for being here. We're going to talk about five different prize fights in this conversation. We're gonna talk about Oscar De La Hoya versus Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, Shane Mosley versus Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, and then eventually we'll get to the subject of Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao. The first fight among the group that we want to discuss is your fight with Floyd in uh, 2007. How did you assess him, strengths and weaknesses, and what was your plan for how to beat him? I had to go beyond thinking, I'm gonna kick his ass. All those antics he did in the press conferences, the trash talking, you have to go beyond that and start thinking smart and think, okay, you know, this guy's a strategist, this guy knows how to calculate his punches, he knows how to throw combinations enough to win the round, so what do I have to do? So it, it goes beyond just trying to kick his ass. Uh, you at that point had not fought Floyd but you had fought Oscar De La Hoya twice. What was your thinking about your buddy Oscar going in against Floyd at that moment in time? I mean, I was in camp with Oscar. I was one of his spar partners. His jab was superb. He was putting the pressure. And there is a sustained attack to the body like nothing you've seen in De La Hoya's career. He then kind of broke down a little bit, maybe in the sixth, seventh, or eighth round midway and couldn't keep up uh, the attack that he was, that he was mounting. I call it father time. <laughs> yeah, fa father time got the best. And I think it gets the best of all of us that sometimes we start breaking down. You're thinking it, you, you see it, but you just can't do it. Is there an element of frustration, even anger, that arises in the late rounds where you say to yourself, son of a bitch won't fight me. Right. He won't allow it to be a fight. That's the part of the whole strategy that you have to kind of get over because I actually felt in the first half of the fight, what I'm capable of doing, my natural talent, the hard work that I put in in the gym. So that first half was fairly easy. Was he setting you up? Absolutely. Uh -huh. But that's, that's, that's why Mayweather's so great. All right, so a little bit further down the road, you get a shot. What did you think about your chances and how you sized him up going into the fight and did what you had seen in Oscar's 12 rounds against Floyd inform that in any way? You know, Oscar probably throws his jab a lot more than me, but uh, I've moved my feet a little more than, than Oscar might. So I went to the fight confident, knowing that I can hit him and knowing that, you know, I thought I could knock him out. You thought you could get him to trade with you a little bit more than he had traded with Oscar? I thought that I could force him to trade with me more than he did with Oscar because of my foot speed to get to him. Did you think that Shane had a chance? Absolutely. Not just because of, of what Shane was doing, but because of what Mayweather was going to do. See, when I, when I faced Mayweather, he was probably thinking, well, Oscar hits hard. He has that left hook, I have to be careful. With Shane, he was thinking the same thing because Shane can hit. He's got a very powerful punch, but he was maybe thinking, I can maybe take his punch. And that allowed Mayweather to come in close. Shane cracked him with a right hand. Boy, did he ever. <laughs> very... There's a hard right hand. Mayweather's trying to ward him off. Mosley's trying to follow up. Everybody agrees yeah. it's the hardest single punch Floyd Mayweather has ever taken in a fight. Did you think, I really got him this time? Well, I knew I really got him. I don't think that, you know, one shot gets the job done. You have to one shot, then you got to build on it. Um, I was going to look for the other shot, but um, which I did, I hit him again a second time. Another big right hand. Mayweather's knees buckled on the second. He was gonna throw a check hook, and I caught him again with the, with the, with the roundhouse right. And that really got, I thought, I thought it was over. The bell rung and saved him, I'm like, ah, almost had him. What were you thinking? First of all, it's a testament to, uh, to how hard of a worker Floyd Mayweather is. Um, you know, he, he was in tremendous, tremendous shape. To recover from a shot like that was just, uh, was just incredible. 
The next thing in succession is you agree to fight Pacquiao. Right. And you're an overwhelming <laughs> favorite because you are so much bigger right. than Manny Pacquiao. You ever have a fly in front of you and you can't catch it and you're like, please go away? <laughs> Manny Pacquiao was like that for eight rounds. He would throw punches and punches and bunches and he was landing everything. And they just, I just couldn't throw back. Was he faster than any other attacking fighter you had been in with? No. No. He was not faster than Shane Mosley. But the fact that he was so relentless. Jim, I was at one point, had him in the center of the ring and he was wide open. And I could see the shot, but I just couldn't pull the trigger. So were you but, looking at Manny and saying, I can beat him? I was looking at Manny, and the guy is like to my chin almost, maybe a little bit taller than my chin. I'm like, there's no way that this guy <laughs> can beat me. <laughs> no way. So I get into the ring with Manny Pacquiao. It's not like he's hard to hit. Like he's not, it's, it's not easy to hit, but he's not hard to hit. I, when I want to, I can, I can throw a little jab or a right hand and, and touch him. So I said, okay, now we're in the second round, I believe. All right, now I'm gonna you know, hit him with right hand, see how he reacts to the right hand. Set it up, line him up. I get ready to throw it. And I see him like this is a little bouncing, boom, boom, it does a little one, two. I fall down. I'm like, wow, that didn't that is that didn't seem that hard. Why why did I go down? How did I go down like that? I get back up and I'm dizzy. I'm like, whoa, I'm still dizzy. Like I never been hit that casually, it seemed like to me. It was because I seen the shot, but won't I never been hit that casually, it went down. All right, uh, maybe got me right, right on the button because I don't go down. So I move around, touch, touch, touch. And I noticed that when he grazed me with the, the right hook, you know, I kind of feel it a little bit. I said, wow, I have 10 more rounds to go. I have 10 more rounds to go. Uh, I, I didn't have any, uh, any firepower. What a lot of opponents uh, talk about is the whirling dervish footwork and how he can get from one place to another so it's, rapidly and hit you from angles where you don't see it coming. Well, it's not really the angles. It's because of it's his height. It doesn't seem like if we're, if we're here, you know, maybe it was just five feet away from each other, and he'll whoop, and you're like, well, how did he get there so fast? He's, he's so small, he shouldn't be able to cut that type of ground. You agree with that, Oscar? Well, his footwork is extraordinary. He has those thick calves, those oh, yeah. big legs. Yeah. So it allows him to just jump in there right away. And that, that's what might give uh, Mayweather trouble. Well, let's talk about Mayweather Pacquiao. Is this, Shane, the classic matchup of the dynamic attacker against the great defender, or is there more to it than that? It might be a little more to it than that now. I noticed Mayweather did have a little bit of punching power. It wasn't like it was easy. Manny the right-hand counterpunch over the top. The right-hand counterpunch. And it's only when he wants to, because you don't know when he's going to turn on the power when he's not. And we noticed that Marquez hit Pacquiao with that overhand right and the straight right. And Mayweather's a master of throwing those, those right hands. He throws them very well. You agree with all of those uh, <laughs> observations, Oscar? I, I, I do agree. Manny Pacquiao is a fighter who is relentless, we know. He's going to go in. He's going to try and attack because if he waits in the pocket, if he just waits for Mayweather to react, then Mayweather can just take him apart. Pot shot him here, there, win the rounds, put the rounds in the bag and win possibly a, a dull fight. So Pacquiao knows he has to press the action, but now how, how does he press the action? For me, when I fought Mayweather, the jab was the key. Mayweather does not know how to block a jab, and that's a left hand, so Pacquiao, if he throws that relentless left hand straight down the pipe, it's bound to land. You agree? Definitely. Oh, definitely. The left hand is definitely going to be the key for Pacquiao to get in uh, when Mayweather slip to the side. But he does have to throw the right hook. I'm not sure if it's going to land like he wants it to, but I know the left hand will, will be probably his best choice. Now, something that we really haven't talked about was the fact that Manny Pacquiao has been in tougher fights. He's been in wars against Shane Mosley. He's been in wars against uh, Marquez several times, Miguel Cotto. Now Mayweather, on the other hand, has been somewhat of kind of cruising. Largely untouched, hit, except for Shane untouched. Mosley's right hand. Exactly, so it's gonna be very, very interesting to see what Manny Pacquiao shows up and what Mayweather shows up. Let's pause for a second here, guys, because in addition to these two legends of the ring, there are other men 
who have fought both Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. Well, when I first was going into the fight against Floyd Mayweather, obviously we, we wasn't going to beat him on speed and we wasn't going to beat him on boxing ability. What we tried to do is try to stay on his chest, try to throw him out of his stride, keep the uh, the punch volume high, you know, keep the work rate very, very strong. You know, I uh, had my successes up close, I was working away. but. I think he likes people putting the pressure on him. I think when people put the pressure on him, they bring the best out of him. Against Manny Pacquiao, it was very apparent just how heavy-handed he was, you know, uh, and more so, he, he, he wasn't going to give ground. And he tried to hit me hard as I was marching in. More explosive punching than Floyd Mayweather. He hurt me with every punch, to be honest. Even the arm punches, they, they, were, they were solid. I think what you've got to do in order to beat Floyd is probably Someone with the same hand speed that he's got, which I think Manny probably probably has. I don't believe for one minute Freddie is sat in the wild card saying jump all over him. Because <laughs> we've all tried that, we've all failed. <laughs> so I think they'll be working on something a little bit different and I think it will be I think it'll be in fast feet, in and out, in and out, lots of punches, try and outwork him. If Manny comes out and goes for him like a lot of people seem to think he'll do, I think it'll be a fantastic fight. Before my fight with Floyd, our, our main point of, of our training camp was trying to take him out of his comfort zone and being aggressive, trying to be on him the whole fight. As long as you can keep him out of his uh, strategy, you can beat him. I think the quickness Manny has, uh, as explosive he can be against you, is his main advantage. When he can be a quicker guy, He's going to reach you no matter what. The styles make fights. Floyd Mayweather think and always try to be one or two step ahead. Manny Pacquiao is faster than anybody and he's going to use his quickness. They have on their hands the, the possibility to make a great fight. Everything depends on what kind of mind they have on May 2nd. I think uh... Pacquiao is a great fighter. He has speed, he has power, but I use my intelligence. I employ the speed, I employ my defense, and the counter punches. I think uh, Floyd Mayweather is the best pound for pound fighter. The Mayweather strategy is a great strategy because his defense is great, and he used the counter punch very well. I think Manny needs to do pressure, needs to land in so many punches with the speed, but he needs more intelligence, a little intelligence on the ring. I think uh, Mayweather, he needs to, to use his legs, his experience, his defense is the, is the important for this fight, because Manny has power. I think if Pacquiao connect one, well, uh, one punch with power, maybe, maybe Mayweather going down. Basically, one final question for both of you. What's the character of the fight that you expect to see? I expect a explosive, high-paced, um, exciting fight. That's not typical of Mayweather's career. Do you expect to see that kind of fight, Shane? I think so. Manny Pacquiao has to make it that way. That's Manny Pacquiao's only hope. It's interesting. You're giving Manny Pacquiao credit by saying that, because let's face it, every opponent has wanted to make that kind of a fire with Floyd Mayweather. You're saying that Pacquiao is good enough to make a fire. Oh yeah, definitely. He has the footwork to do it. He's fast with, on his feet. He's going to move, uh, dart in and out, and he's going to force Mayweather to have to fight him that type of way. Fans all around the world hope that you are both correct. <laughs> Gentlemen, you've both been tremendously gracious with your honesty and your candid opinions. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Lampley will be back in a little bit. But first, we are joined now by three boxing legends, the great George Foreman, Lennox Lewis, and Bernard Hopkins, of course. Guys, all three of you were involved in fights that transcended boxing. Bernard, you with Felix Trinidad, and Lennox, you with Mike Tyson, and George, of course, the rumble in the jungle with Muhammad Ali. And so you have unique insights into what's going on emotionally with these guys. Lennox, I'd love to start with you because this Mayweather-Pacquiao fight is the biggest fight since Lennox and Mike Tyson. <laughs> yes. You had a lot of big fights. Yes. But Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson transcended boxing. Why? 
I would say, um, you know, he was the man that everybody wanted to see me fight. And he was the mysterious guy. He was the bad guy. You could say if there was a force, he was the he was the bad force. I was the good force. We both punch very hard, throw great punches, and uh, the world wanted to see both of us matched up together. George, you were involved, obviously, in many big fights, but the rumble in the jungle against Muhammad Ali in 1974 certainly transcended the sport and maybe the sporting world. What about the fact that you came in undefeated, 40-0, 37 knockouts? Did it add pressure? What was the feeling as an undefeated fighter in that fight? I, I think what happened is with all undefeated fighters, uh, you get a little overconfident. You start thinking, hey, nobody can beat me. I've never lost. And it's okay for other pe people to say that, but then when you start believing it yourself, that's when you are defeated already. I had never stepped into the ring with anyone and took a step backwards after I became champion. It was like, you're gonna have to run. And Muhammad Ali, as soon as the bell rang, he was on the rope. I didn't back up, but I didn't realize that skill and endurance locked into that brain of his. I hit him with the hardest shots I'd ever hit anyone with. Which were basically the hardest shots ever thrown. And uh, later on he whispered, that all you got? I realized this was something different. What was that like for you to be involved in an event like that? Oh, it was tremendous. That was a wonderful privilege for me, the whole world watching, then going out of the country. It was in Africa, fighting two Americans, and one is supposed to lose, and the other is a folk hero. And of course, I was the undefeated heavyweight champ of the world. It made it big because we were equally matched. And that's you and Felix Trinidad, yes. right, Bernard? Yes, it's the same, same concept. Trinidad was undefeated. And you were actually the underdog against Felix Trinidad. Yes. What did it feel like for you? Well, it didn't feel good. I had a chip on my shoulder. I wanted to prove uh, not only to the fans um, of his and the world of boxing that um, I was a better fighter. And then, of course, there were the circumstances surrounding your fight. It was originally supposed to be fought on September 15th, 2001. And, of course, September 11th changed the world. The, the fight was postponed. And so there was a lot of importance put on getting back to normal. And this was the first major event in New York post 9-11. Yep. yep. We was thinking about getting home to our families. We couldn't get bridges shut down, planes was grounded. So we just started helping, going to police stations, and I felt like I was the part of the, the whole healing and not be a prisoner to your home and not be afraid to, to go out and understand that, you know, we Americans, we are, we are free. It was just a bittersweet experience for me. I felt that, you know, this was my moment to, to shine, and even though it was extreme pressure, it was a type of pressure what I had to deliver. And, and that night I did. Yeah, and literally fighting for something. Yes. Who's the pressure on in this fight? Obviously, both guys have to deal with pressure, but between Mayweather and Pacquiao, the dynamic here, who's the pressure on? Pacquiao, it's a lot of pressure because here you're facing a guy who literally has gone out there and beaten everybody he's gotten into the ring with. You've got to find a way to beat him. All Mayweather has to do is maintain it's consistency. The pressure is on Pacquiao. I disagree. I think that the pressure is on Mayweather based on keeping that O and hopefully trying to get that 50 and O to make history down the line. If he has that pressure on him, he's creating that for himself. He doesn't need to create that pressure. He's been through so many fights that, you know, this is just another fight for him. He's been doing something his, his whole life, even for over the last five fights, it, to me, I think he's getting faster. You know, I seen him in a couple of fights, I'm like, wow, he, he's not no old man to me. I can't see no age there. Whenever you think his legs are gone, he dances for 12 rounds. It's crazy, yeah. but if you box against the top guy, he brings the best out of you. So in this fight, he's gonna have to move, he's gonna have to punch. If he doesn't punch, he's gonna get hit. I, I agree that he's gonna have to do more movement. That's why I think this fight is very interesting because he's gonna have to do things out, un, out of character than he did the last three or four fights, Max. And that's why I see there's some adjustments gonna be made. Can he make those adjustments now? 
at this age, at this time, can he do it now? I think that's going to be important. That's going to be the billion dollar question. And from Pacquiao's point of view, if things aren't going his way, can he sell out to try to get that knockout? I mean, Floyd, we saw whatever people want to say about the punching power, Canelo wasn't in a hurry to get in on Floyd. Canelo's a big, strong kid. He wasn't rushing in on Floyd. He was Canelo, tasting something Canelo, he didn't like. Canelo got tired of getting counterpunch. And when you think one split one second about that you didn't like that last punch, Mayweather has that edge on him because now he's thinking about it. I didn't like that left hook. I is didn't that like how it that is, right George? Hand. Because you were an attacking fighter, constantly attacking. Yeah, I like the idea of always going after the guy. But then the second time around, I set my defense as well. I think that uh, Mayweather, as far as I'm concerned, he's since he was a teenager, he's been boxing the same way. He's even proved on doing what he does, but if same ain't broke. Thing. And if, if it ain't broke, there's no pressure. He's not going to go out there and do anything extra. The other guy realizes, I got to fight him. He's a fighting a counterpuncher. And a counterpuncher, the one thing they all have in con common, they don't like to fight. I say. You know, all these, all the guys that box. I disagree with him already. <laughs> and, and, and listen, I don't know what he's going to say, but I, I'm, I'm going to be safe to say I disagree with him already. Let me tell you, if you can't catch it and you can't punch it, then how do you score the points? But Pacquiao throws so many punches, even though they're not connecting, we know in the, the world of boxing, a lot of punches get counted that don't hit, that judges count as punches. Let me tell you. So Mayweather's throwing Pacquiao you know, two takes three, chances but Pacquiao's out there. throwing six. That's the problem. He's going to take chances out Who's there. Who's that, Pacquiao? Yeah, he's going to take chances oh, yeah. out there. He has he's to an take, aggressive fighter. Yeah, he has to take the chance. But that's going to open him up to a counter puncher. That's what a counter puncher loves to do. Counting, he wants counting. you to commit yourself. A sensational right hand knockout. The way to beat a, a fighter like Mayweather is you concentrate on winning one round at a time. Yep, I agree. You win one round, you look at the judges and say, I put in more punches, I've land, sit on your stool, rest. <sighs> Second round, win. Third round, win. Maybe you have to coast one round. Then you get back and win the next round. Don't try to knock out, forget the knockout. Don't try to hit this guy in the head. He has a good defense, he rolled with the shoulders. Get up, he rolls, he rolls, and he's waiting for an opening. Floyd is looking while he's rolling. He's not all over the place. He's focused on the opening. He want Pacquiao to extend himself. Mayweather is rolling and rolling. He's looking for the opportunities as he rolls. Pacquiao is going to have to either be on an angle, not square up, and running off shots. When I say hustling, letting his hands go. Bell ring, he, Pacquiao's going to get that round. If those rounds continue to be that way, Pacquiao's going around because he look like he's busier. Mayweather's getting maybe one or two shots in. And that's why I see this fight as being very dangerous because Pacquiao throws a lot of punches and he throws from angles. He never squares up. And in unlike front of a lot of southpaws who can do that, he has a little mustard on the, on all those oh, shots. Oh, he can punch. On all those he can shots. Punch. What do you think the first round is going to be like? Because to me, I think it's going to be a chess match. I think, you know, who's going to first? Who's gonna I disagree. Who's going to throw the first punch? Pacquiao. I think Pacquiao's going to yeah, throw the first punch. He and he's going to make, he's going to force Mayweather to, uh, to defend himself, to retaliate. So that's when I think the fight's going to, I see the first two, three rounds being like Hagler and Hearns, but no early knockdown, no early knockouts rather. Maybe a knockdown or two, but no early knockouts because I feel that both guys haven't knocked the one out in a long time. I think the matchup is great. You got the you got a counter puncher Going against aggressive. an aggressor. Yeah. So something has to give. This is a great matchup in that sense. This is about pride. This is about dignity. This is about I told you I can be him if I'm Floyd Mayweather. I told you I did the same thing five years ago. How big is this fight, George? I think this fight is big. Lewis Melling, Ali, Frazier. No, no, not Foreman. Ali Frazier, because that was big. And Pacquiao. Mayweather. Those three fights will then make up what boxing is all about. So the rematch of Lewis Schmeling is the biggest? Biggest. The, the, the first fight of Ali Frazier is the second biggest? Yeah. And this is the third biggest? This is it. I think you might be right about that. I mean, because fans make fights. This is what they want. This, what, this is what makes it big. Uh, you they know, want to see for it, me, it's and they're hungry for it, and I want to see it. It's another super fight. Every generation, we got to see a super fight. Yep. This That's generation, it. this is the super fight that we've been waiting for. Guys, we're going to get your picks on the big fight in a second. But first, let's hear who the common opponents of Mayweather and Pacquiao think is going to win this fight. 
I think that Mayweather has the, the speed and uh, the movement and the ability to win. This is the type of fight that can go either way, but my pick is definitely Mayweather. My head's with Mayweather, but my corazón is with Pacquiao. I'm not going to pick a winner because this is a tough fight. We have in one corner Manny Pacquiao and the other one Floyd Mayweather. But the guy who comes with no fear of anything on May 2nd, that's going to be the winner. I think uh, Mayweather wins this fight because Mayweather has experience, because Mayweather has a great defense. He used uh, the contra punch very well. Mayweather is more intelligent than Pacquiao. I think uh, Mayweather wins this fight. That would give Floyd the edge because Floyd can generally adapt to whatever style he's in against, and I think he'll adapt to money. Joining me now on the set, Jim Lampley. But first, guys, your picks for Mayweather Pacquiao. Mayweather loses the first three rounds. He does that all the time, and he will not be able to catch up, although he'll finish stronger. But I give it to Pacquiao by one round. Well, that's interesting analysis right there. Lennox, who wins the fight, Mayweather or Pacquiao? I think if it goes the distance, Mayweather's going to win. I think uh, Mayweather's movement is too quick, and I, I still believe you can't, if you can't catch it, you can't hit it. Bernard, who wins, Mayweather or Pacquiao? Well, first of all, I think the first six rounds of this 12-round fight, people are going to get their money's worth early. And after six rounds, I think that Mayweather will make those adjustments and win a decision. I don't think it's going to be a unanimous. I think it's going to be maybe a controversial decision. But I believe that the first six rounds is going to be history making. I believe so. I believe Pacquiao is going to come all blazing. Uh, and I believe that Mayweather is going to have to pit the fire out. Guys, this has been a treat. Thank you very much for doing this tonight. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Yes, Jim, we have the best jobs in the world. Agreed. And now that we've heard from the legends, Max, a chance for a final moment of personal reflection from us, I find that as we build up to this, quite a number of people from other media will ask me, will this be the most significant fight you've ever covered? And my answer is, I know it'll be the biggest economic event in the history of boxing. That seems written in stone. But as for the significance of the fight, I have to see it first before I can answer that. Yeah, George Foreman made the point that the biggest, most significant fight ever was the rematch between Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling. I agree. And then the second biggest, most significant fight ever is Ali Frazier won, 1971. I agree. And he said that he thinks that Mayweather Pacquiao is the biggest, most significant fight since Ali Frazier won. And I agree, I made the same point on the air a couple weeks ago, but then we don't really know the significance before the event takes place. If it's an amazing fight, then yes, it will be recorded in history that way. However we're anticipating it, we don't really know what we're dealing with in terms of significance until these guys produce. So I think I agree with you. We don't have to wait that long, Max. Thanks very much for being with us. Not much of a distance now between here and May 2.